Right, you guys got another video here for you on how to overclock your CPU. Now this is a very basic uh, tutorial because it's quite a complex uh, topic and everyone's got different hardware and all the hardware will be different to the one I'm using. I've got a 5820K uh, Haswell processor here which is a 2011 socket um, a CPU and we're going to be taking a look at overclocking it. So we're in the BIOS here and what I'm going to do first is enable XMP profile for the memory then going to go to the overclock settings and enable advanced mode uh, it's in simple by default but we're going to enable advanced mode which will allow us to change the CPU ratio you can see it's on all cores click on CPU ratio and I'm going to change this to 44 which will be 4.4 gigahertz that's an overclock from 3.3 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz change the dynamic mode to fixed mode this will allow us to uh, keep the uh, CPU core running at 4.4 gigahertz at all time. You do have ring ratio here and we have a bunch of other settings. We're going to skip by those for this tutorial because they are a little bit more advanced. Uh, also we've got um, D, uh, DRAM uh, frequency clock and stuff like that. We're going to leave that on auto for this tutorial. But also you're going to see some voltages down here and these are essential to getting a really good stable overclock. Go into the uh, CPU features and what we're going to look for here is make sure C1E support is disabled and I've already got that disabled here but Intel C state I'm going to disable that also right there and you'll see whatever is disabled in my BIOS here. Now you can enable and disable stuff but you want to try and take some load off of the uh, motherboard so it doesn't uh, make it very difficult for getting a stable overclock so you can see here I'm going to leave the uh, DRAM voltages all set to auto leave them as is in this video but what we're look interested in is the CPU core voltage now I've seen people going up to stupid amounts of voltage like 1.5 you don't want to be doing that um, I'd like to keep it around about 1.3 uh, volts and that will be for quite a high uh, overclock that'll be 4.4 4. 4. but if you want to just do a moderate overclock try and get away with overclocking as much as you can without touching the voltage for the very first time because obviously the more voltage you put on will uh, decrease the longevity of your hardware so 1.110 volts will give you a moderate overclock if I change this to say 40 we should be able to get an overclock with that sort of voltage and also for that CPU uh, ratio. What we're going to do here now is go here and put this back to 44. Now it's always advisable to take small increments, uh, small steps, but I know this can uh, run at 44, which is 4.4 gigahertz. And I'm going to go to the CPU core voltage and I'm going to make this 1.299. Now I would advise you to start off at a lower voltage until you get a crash and then you can keep adding more voltage until you get it stable. Now the VCCIO voltage, I'm not going to be touching that in this video, but if you need to play around with those settings to get a stable overclock, you can do. That's probably a more uh, advanced uh, tutorial a little bit later on uh, with another video, but in this one, we're just going to keep it pretty simple. So as you can see here, these are the settings I've got so far. You can see the uh, CPU base clock is set to 100 megahertz and what we're going to do is push F10 and click yes to save and boot up the computer. Now because we've got to the desktop doesn't necessarily mean we've got a stable overclock. So if you're a one time uh, score overclocker and you just want to run Cinebench and you get a, a complete Cinebench score and you want to then tap that back down you can do but we're going to go for a more stable overclock so you can see here I'm going to open up HW monitor and open up Cinebench and run that and see if we can get a, a score. Now what we're after here is checking the package here to make sure that the uh, temperatures are not overdone. So we don't want to overdo our CPU. We're running on area so you can see here we're getting 60 and 59 and uh, also we're getting 64. You'll see the different cores have got different temps. So keep an eye on the temps and also you can see here the score that you get if the Cinebench is completed. So I'm going to run Cinebench now and see if we get a completion of Cinebench. Now this will tax out uh, the 
cores to 100%. As you can see here, they're all running 100% and you can see the temperatures are now starting to climb. Now remember, we are under air. We have got uh, a, an air cooler on here, not a water-cooled unit, so it's not going to be as uh, successful with an air cooler, but we're trying to go as far as we can with this air cooler. Now, as you can see here, we've got a pretty good score. We've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 5 on Cinebench here, and you can see uh, the scores are not too bad. So we've got a pretty stable overclock by running Cinebench, and what you may want to do here is test the stability by maxing out the GPU and also the CPU and leave that running for a considerable amount of time to see whether you get any instabilities. Now remember we haven't overclocked the memory at all. Uh, the package temperatures have now dropped back down to around about 46 and 47 and they're fluctuating. So I'm going to open up here AIDA64 and what we're going to do is we're going to run a stability test. Now you want to make sure that the system doesn't crash and running a stability test with the GPU memory and also uh, the CPU, leave that running and hopefully you don't get any crashes. Now if you do start to get a blue screen or a crash or artifacts on the screen or any of that sort of stuff, then it's not a stable overclock and you will need to tap it down a little bit uh, to a much more stable overclock. The problem is here, now you can see the temperatures are starting to climb. Uh, we've got 83 max and also it's flickering from 80 Celsius, 75 Celsius and so on. And they are the sort of fluctuations we're getting here. But it is climbing and uh, you can see we're under area. So basically CPU usage is running at 100% here. So it's important uh, that you get a really stable overclock and run this for a period of time. Now the way to do this is obviously not jump straight in and go to a massive overclock here uh, to say 45 or 46 or 44 or any of those types of overclocks. What you want to do is start off in increments, very small steps and basically try to add no voltage whatsoever until you get a blue screen. Once you get a blue screen then you can start adding a little bit of uh, voltage. Don't go crazy with a voltage like you see me using in this video. Straight off by putting 1.299. What you want to do is uh, basically put in uh, small amounts until you get a stable overclock. So I'm going to put in a profile here and save this as 44 gigahertz, which is 4.4 gigahertz. And uh, we haven't touched the RAM or anything yet. So I'm going to go into the settings here again. And I'm just going to save this profile. Now, if you want to reset your uh, BIOS back to default settings, you can either do it uh, by going into a manually and changing them back to simple and then changing the CPU ratio back to auto by typing auto. You can do that or you can go into the settings and change them back to default settings. Now, if you've given up and you don't want to uh, keep your overclocks you can go back to restore defaults of your BIOS and it will take away any sort of uh, overclocks that you've got and then you can save those changes. If you want to continue to overclock uh, you want to keep running Cinebench and also stress testing and if you get any blue screens like you're going to see right here then that means you don't have a stable overclock and you need to uh, make changes to your BIOS to get a better overclock, okay? If you don't do that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with instability and also shorten the life of your hardware if you're putting too much voltage through and stuff like that. Now, one of the most common questions I get is, does overclocking uh, damage your hardware? And the answer to that is yes and no. If you're doing small little moderate overclocks, uh, then it's not gonna damage the hardware uh, because obviously you're not putting uh, any extra voltage through. It's only when you start putting extra voltage through uh, and go above the recommended uh, values of voltage which will put the hardware at risk. So if you start putting uh, 1.4 volts, 1.5 volts uh, and you're doing it just 
for a quick score to get a stable overclock to see whether you get a high score and then you ramp it back down again that's okay because you're doing it very quickly and very for a short period but if you're talking about using it with those high voltages going through for long periods then you will definitely 100% shorten the life of that hardware so use a bit of common sense take small steps small increments uh, by uh, increasing the CPU ratio up in small increments turn off any sort of features that are using a lot more resources to give the uh, CPU a chance to be stable turn off any boosting and turbo boosting because you're going to be overclocking and that's just going to make it harder to get a stable overclock and uh, watch the voltages that you're putting through okay try and get a overclock without putting any voltage in as soon as you get a crash then go back into the BIOS and then start adding the small increments of voltage until you uh, get stable. Okay, now this whole process takes time and you will have to stress test everything. Your memory, your if you're overclocking the memory, your CPU, you're going to have to get a st stable overclock to make sure that you're not going to run into any problems. Okay, anyway, that's pretty much it. You've seen a nice little overclock here. They're the basic steps that you can uh, follow. And uh, if you want any sort of help, then pop on to our Discord and I can give you some advice and also some uh, help over there if you want it. Anyway, you do this at your own risk, of course. So just remember, uh, hardware is uh, very expensive and you need pretty good hardware to overclock, i.e. you're going to need a good power supply, good motherboard, a good CPU, good cooling, and uh, stuff like that and you should be pretty much good to go now also uh, there is this silicone lottery which is some cpus overclock better than others and again also another thing this was done under air this was using the reven justice uh, cooler you can do it under air but it's much better underwater with using a closed loop wall cord system or hardline uh, wall cord system which is going to give you better results in the long run just do your uh, adequate testing and make sure everything is stable and you should be pretty much good to go from there. Anyway, that's about it for this video. My name is Bim Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your continued support. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.